the red coat of my dreams that I have recently made. I'm going to be sharing all the details, lots of sewing aspects, very fun video, so stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back if you're always here with me. I thank you for that. And if you're brand new to the channel, I hope you enjoy all the practical sewing content I am providing for you every week. So while you're watching, if you enjoy the content, you could consider subscribing, joining this community, tapping the bell so you don't miss when a new video goes live. I have made a red coat and I've wanted to make one for years and years and years. I love red. I just don't live in a weather that requires you to have a red coat because it's just too hot. You know, I know most of you are in the Northern Hemisphere enjoying the cold weather and making all the snuggly cozy things while I'm in the Southern Hemisphere roasting in Brazil. Not all the Southern Hemisphere has the weather that I have, at least where I live near to Sao Paulo in Brazil. It's spring here, but it's hot. So I'm just sewing all the snuggly things just for you. <laughs> and I'll be wearing these in many more months to come in my mild winter. My mom had a red coat in the 90s made out of wool. She wore it for ages. I always saw that coat on her and loved it. Years and years went by and I never got around to making myself a red coat. Well, <laughs> the wait is over for me. I have my red coat and I love it. So I made my dream red coat come true while testing a new pattern by Love Notions called the Octave Coat. It's a pattern that has been in development for quite a long time and it's a really nice coat pattern actually quite simple and easy to sew with a really nice visual impact the body of the coats are the same so they share the same body pieces front back sleeves all those things the main difference between them is the collar there is a hooded collar and a short collar there is a super interesting pocket to construct that is sort of integrated with the princess seams here i loved making that pocket and the coat is meant to be fully lined. In regards to fabric, of course you have all your medium to heavy weight wovens, especially your boiled wools, melton wools, heavy suede, like, you know, your typical winter fabrics that are woven. If you want to make this out of a heavy weight knit with minimal stretch, like those sweat shirtings, have Sherpa on the other side, really heavy fleece, that sort of knit fabric that is super structured and really heavy. So Ponty is not adequate for this at all. I have made mine in none of these. I don't have wool. Even if I wanted to find wool around here where I live, I would have to look up online and I would never wear a wool coat. I mean, I'll never wear it. It's just not cold enough, not enough to wear anything wool. So I have chosen a fabric that is a medium weight wool blend twill. So when you touch it and feel it, it feels medium weight. It's not heavy at all. And it's just the right warmth for my winter next year. And it still looks really nice. So that's what I've chosen. The fabric consumption for a coat as always is more than for other types of patterns. You know, you need fabric for your main body. In this case, the short collar option uses slightly less than the hooded one. I made the short collar version. So I did end up using a full three meters of fabric. I think that in yards is like three and something yards. Also need interfacing and all your typical notions, you know, but a lot of interfacing actually because the collar pieces are quite large. This pattern comes in the new sizing now that Love Notions has. They will all be from size extra small to 5X. So this will go up to a bust of 57 and a half and a hip of 59 and a half. There is a standard bust piece on the front for those who have a difference between the high and the full bust up to four inches. If the difference is higher or sort of like a D cup or above, you can use the full bust piece and that will give you more room at the bust without having to do a full bust adjustment. The ease around the coat depends on the size, of course. You know, there is a wide range of sizes here. So anywhere from three to five inches around the bust. And that is enough ease to have a layer underneath, you know. At the hips is from six to nine inches. Now, if you choose the full bust piece, you will have two extra inches of ease at the waist and the hips. In Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you a range of things that I went through to make my coat. I'm going to show you how I lengthened it because I wanted mine longer. And I'm going to show you how to construct the pockets and all sorts of general construction tips within the pattern itself. There are four links that you can click on that will take you to videos developed by the pattern maker, you know, to do the pockets, to put on the lining, 
to hem, different aspects, also the understitching. So there is a little special place in the collar called the break point and I'm going to be showing you that as well in my video so let's hop into that. The pattern pieces are quite large so I have just placed them all on the floor so you can get an idea. That is the short collar that I'm using. This needs to be cut out four times, two pairs mirrored images and then another pair for interfacing. That is the side for the front. That is the front center and that is the pocket piece there and there that's super fun to put together. This is the standard bust that I'm doing in a size large. This is the back. It's not cut on the fold. It has a center back seam. There is shaping there at the center back seam. And then I have two lining pieces. This is the front. That's the back. I don't have the sleeve piece here, it's just a one piece sleeve, <laughs> nothing different to what you've ever seen on a sleeve. These are the two main pieces for the front of the coat. So that piece is going to have the collar attached right there and this is a side, this is a princess seam right there. And all these pocket areas have dots that are marked on the pattern. I have reinforced all those little areas with little tiny pieces of interfacing. It's recommended in the pattern. So I've done that to all these areas. In the end, it was 10 little pieces of interfacing that I needed to cut out. There you can see five, but there are other five on the other side. So my muslin fabric is yellow and it's the same on the right and the wrong side. So what I do to make the difference for me is I scribble all around the wrong side of the fabric. So that is my mark that signifies wrong for me that it's all scribbled on. With a pen I've just sort of drawn on there where I'm going to stay stitch that little red line that you can see there and I've done that to all these little corner areas. So I've gone ahead and stay stitch all those little areas there about an inch and a half away from the dot there everywhere you can see the black. Here you can see it even closer where I've done the stay stitching now I'll show you how these go together. It's not a traditional way to put a jacket together. It's quite interesting. Okay, so that is the front piece there, the center front, and this is the side front. I've got wrong sides of fabric facing up here, and I'm gonna remove the top layer here. And I have a front piece with the right side of the fabric facing up, the wrong side facing down. And I'm gonna grab this pattern piece that is the wrong sides up and place it right sides together on top of there in a flipped manner that you're going to see. So this is the right side of the fabric there. I'm getting this pattern piece. This is the wrong side of the fabric and this pocket piece will go on top of there. Matching the shape, they are the same shape. And all these points need to match the ones underneath there. So you have all that long shape going that way, the right side of the fabric here. And then you have the princess seam going this way here. So right side to right side of the fabric. Pocket piece will be sewn on. And then in a sort of maneuver, this princess seam will be sewn onto there. So I've got both sides positioned there, ready to be sewn. Remember that is the right side of the fabric you're seeing there. This is the wrong side that's sort of placed like that. So you have that long piece there and then the princess seam of the lateral come this way and mirrored on the other side over there. So I'm going to work on one pocket and show you. These are the two front pieces that are going to be worn on the right side of the body. So you can see the central front there. This is the right side of the fabric and I have the lateral side on top of it. Right sides together. See because the fabric is nice and yellow and clean. I have scribbled onto one side to reference the wrong side for me. And I have matched the two pocket pieces on top of each other on the side. These dots have been placed one on top of each other. So if I pin through that dot, it will come out right on the other side where the other dot is. Same as there and same as there. Now the stay stitching, I did it, but not that exactly at half an inch. So that might be a bit wonky, but that doesn't matter because it's just stay stitching. Now when I sew this, it will be at exactly half an inch seam allowance. I will guide myself on the edge of the fabric there and I'll sew there, pivot, keep sewing, do that little curve there, come down there, exactly on that point, pivot. So after sewing here, pivoting, going the curve up the pocket, pivoting there, the only one that needs to be clipped is on the central front piece on here that little diagonal cut there to the point but not going through it that's the only clip that you need to be doing for this pocket 
So I'm just gonna clip there, right there. And that will allow me to extend this when the time comes for that. But all this other piece, they just stay intact. They don't need to be clipped in order to sew on the pocket properly, you know? So I'm gonna start on the side seam there and sew towards that dot there. At half an inch seam allowance that I'm referencing there on the plate. I'm gonna put my needle right into the dot there and pivot. So we're coming up to that dot there. Right on the dot there and pivot again. Now this part up to the dot right there. Now with my needle in and my presser foot up, I need to bring this long area and bring it in here underneath the lateral one right there. And I need to be careful to move all the fabric to one side. And I don't want to have any pucker right there. So I'm just adjusting the fabric underneath the presser foot. Making sure this next stitch goes clean into the fabric without any packers and I might just hand wheel for a few here. And now this is the princess seam that I'm sewing right here. There's a few notches that need to match up right there. Single notches. There is a little curve in this seam. have my right wearer side here on the pressing board and I wanted to show you what this looks like inside. This is the side seam that was sewn, pivoted, went around the curve there, pivoted again and then on this one was that that clip was done diagonally right there and now this enables you to press open the princess seam like this and then just press all this as it's lying naturally, just press it down. Now this has a curve and I would just make a few snips there, not to the seam line, about halfway, so that it eliminates the tension in the fabric when you're gonna turn this curve here. This is just disgusting muslin fabric, it's never gonna look as nice, but those clips allow that seam to sort of spread a little bit and lie flat. And that is the intersection there that meets the princess seam and starts this slant. And the pocket doesn't open right up to there, it starts the opening there. So there's a distance between that intersection and the opening of the pocket that fits your hand. The sewing of the pocket is very easy, um, just a few pivot points there, but nothing really that difficult. And you can see the blue dot from my marker, marking where I had to pivot and be very careful there. So that is how it's done. It's quite simple and it makes for a nice clean pocket opening there. If you are not going to line your jacket, which I wouldn't recommend, all the edges would have need to be searched prior to putting all of this together so that everything was neat. Although you will have a raw area right there when you snip, even if you had searched this area before. So you just have to be really careful with that zone there. I would always recommend to line a coat and the lining will cover all of this and protect all this area. I have half an assembled muslin piece here hanging on a hanger and these are the two back pieces that were sewn in the middle. There is a seam there in the center back that has some shaping. I have attached on a sleeve. It is a one piece sleeve, very easy to set into the arm side, not much ease there. There is some, as you can see the gathering there, but it's not excessive, very easy to set in. I have the left side of the front already attached there on the side seam and I'll flip it around. This is the front view, I have the left front there, left wearer's front already sewn in there with the sleeve and everything. And now the one I've shown you how to put all this pocket area, I need to sew in that side seam, complete that shoulder seam there and I'll be able to try on my muslin. I'm taking a little shortcut to my muslin fitting and I have got my collar piece 
short collar piece right sides together with the fabric there is a little notch there that matches the shoulder seam and when this is sewn together there it will match the center back seam that's right there there's another notch to match right there and then that goes all the way down it's a curved seam my thing is I just want to see if this is going to be the right width for me so I'm going to show you how it looks on with this paper on it pinned so I have my muslin on here in my yellow fabric I think the shoulder fits fine. And here you can see my paper shawl collar that I have pinned on there as a piece of fabric wood. I'm running out of the yellow muslin fabric so I'm trying to be careful with what really needs to be sewn to check for fit. If I move further away and you pretend there's another one of these on this other side, I will have this overlap right there. And there will be a button there uh, in a place where I need to determine on myself Towards the very end where I want my button closure to be, I'm not going to be doing the belt option. The pocket placement is okay for my hands, it's not too high or too low. As you can see, I've made a short muslin, you can see the pocket peeping through there. And I'm going to get my son to measure from the end of this muslin to mid knee, and then I'll compare that to the pattern pieces to see how much I want to lengthen it. I know I want to lengthen my coat to mid knee length. So I'm just standing here and you can see the length of this muslin is shorter than the normal coat. I think the normal coat would be around there. And so I'm just going to get my son to measure the distance from the end of my muslin to mid knee. And then I can compare and get the right length I want for my coat. So Martin's just putting the edge of the tape there and seeing where the, mid, the middle of my knee. How much is it? 12 and 12 and a half. 12 and a half inches? Yeah. Okay. So Martin just told me how much I needed to add to this length, not to the length of the coat because I didn't make a full length muslin. So I'm going to go now and compare. I did make a line on the pattern pieces where I was cutting this short. So from there on, I'm going to measure 12 and a half inches and then add for the hem allowance. And that's how I'll get the coat that I want at the length that I want. Basically, the only adjustment I've made it's just for looks, it doesn't really affect the fit or the style of the coat. The coat is meant to hit mid thigh and I wanted it to hit mid knee. So there is a lengthened and shortened line in all the pieces. This lateral piece doesn't need to be lengthened. So, so these are the five pieces that I needed to lengthen. I chose an amount, nine inches I believe, it says there nine inches. So there is a shortened and lengthened line in all these pattern pieces. And I just cut through there, spread it apart, added 9 inches there, 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 and there. The width and the shape of the original coat is the same at the bottom. And all I did was add the amount and just drew the lines there on the sides to make them nice and smooth and to keep the same shape. Very, very easy modification to make to this coat to have it just look a bit longer, you know, without changing the style or the fit or anything you've already seen how i put the muslin together and this is the lining that i've done exactly the same the difference with the lining is that it doesn't have the pocket piece so it's just been drafted in one piece so that's easier but the construction is the same side seams shoulder seams center back seam there is a little pleat that was drafted into the back lining that has been done there and then the collar is just this one humongous piece like that all the way down and that's just been sewn on the center back that matches the center back there so it's basically just one continuous sort of curved stitch that goes all the way up and down and there are not just too much at the shoulder seams and midpoint around there and at the very bottom as well so it's very easy to put together over here i have the shell of the coat it's on top of my muslin i've done exactly the same so the collar was sewn on all the way around in the exact same way. This area here I have snipped into that curve so I could press these seams open. I've chosen to press this seam open. For my fabric at least it looks really nice, look really clean. For this intersection here of the princess seam and where the pocket starts I have done a narrow top stitch to keep that seam nice and flat. So basically now it's just setting in sleeves on the lining, very easy to do and then setting sleeves over there and then putting the shell and the lining right sides together they go sewn all the way around on the collar I have united the coat to the lining all that is a seam continuous 
that unites it when you turn it right sides out there together. Still at very raw stages. Now there is an area here called the break point. I can feel it. <laughs> There's a little mark there. And this is where the collar would naturally bend. I would try it on and confirm that it, this is the exact area because when I determine that, I need to understitch on this side for a portion so that when the collar lies naturally, this one won't be peeping out. And then at that same point, I need to flip the understitching to this other side because in the front, and the stitching needs to be on the other side. Well, that is what's left basically of the main sewing things. So doing the under stitching from here to there on the seam that's behind there and then doing the opposite on this side. So in there all the way down and the under stitching will be in there all the way down. This is inside the jacket. So this is the interface collar, that's the non-interfaced one and that is the break point there and you're meant to snip that so that the seam allowance can go to one side from here up all around the collar and to the other side from here down all the way to the hem and the stitching right there and under stitching right there and that allows the collar to fall naturally correctly and the under stitching never to be seen when the, you're wearing the coat you know this is the interface collar the one that was attached to the lining and the one that's going to be visible there and at the back is the collar that's not interfaced. Um, this is not together, so this could actually open and hang loose like that. I'm gonna do an extra step, and I'm gonna go inside and stitch those seam allowances from shoulder to shoulder seam just by hand, just to hold it together so that this won't move around. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what I'm doing. This is the center back seam of the main coat and that is the center back of the lining. It's got a pleat there. And this is a shoulder seam. That is another shoulder seam that's been pressed open. They've been matched to the shoulder seam of the lining and of the lining here. This center back seam has been matched. So it's just a tiny hand basting from here to there. This won't be seen from the outside of the coat whatsoever, ever. And I'm just catching the two seam allowances basically and just doing the most basic of hand sewing. Like there's nothing special to what I'm doing here and I'm doing it even in a black thread. So you can see, see how I'm just catching these two seam allowances together and that will just keep that area of the coat from moving and separating. a basic knot at the end there to keep this from falling off. Now this could be done by, by machine but it's not necessary like there's no really any reason to do it by machine so you can see that stitching from there to there and now when I pull these right sides out I have my collar there and on the other side and that stitching isn't visible anywhere and it just keeps this together like it's not going to open you know it's not going to move and change position you can see the short collar that i've chosen it's fully lined i didn't want a flashy lining that had other colors i think it limits the clothes that you wear when you have flashy linings like that i mean i think it's fine if you're planning to make a coat for a more casual sort of lifestyle but for me this is more of a formal coat and if i'm wearing a nice dress under there with a print I don't want the wind to flap open my coat and show another print on the lining. I wanted it to be really classic and just red on red basically. So inside I have satin chamois to line the whole thing, the sleeves, everything. And you can see a tiny row of top stitching I've done to hold the lining to the collar piece there to just keep it flat. You can see the little pleat inside of the lining there. The sleeves are really easy to set in. There's not excessive ease at the sleeve cap. Um, it's a one piece sleeve. I was talking about the break point in the video. I can actually touch here where I snipped the seam allowance, allowing me to understitch on one side there and then on the other side there. So there's understitching on the whole collar, but it's not visible anywhere buttons are optional you can also make a self belt I didn't go with that route I would always prefer a button so I did my buttonhole where the buttonhole placement was and then I tried it on myself to make sure that the button was going to be where I wanted it and mine does cross over quite a bit it's supposed to cross over 
so it's not meant to be centered there like one piece of the collar to the other it's supposed to cross over so my button is sort of at the princess seam there now to stabilize this button I have a little button on the other side so I placed them both together and sort of sewed them on at the same time and that's going to protect the fabric there and it's not going to look horrible and it's going to keep it there really nice and safe and stable the pockets are really cool I have top stitched that princess seam just that princess seam there I think it looks pretty that way and there you put your hand in the pocket the pockets are genius I really like constructing these pockets easier than what you would expect really <laughs> and at the back the center back seam has shaping and it gives really good shaping at the back at least for my body I don't have extra fabric pulling at the small of my back it's a really good fit at the back and I lengthened my coat by eight to nine inches I can't remember <laughs> but it is considerable the amount I lengthened when actually it's a really easy adjustment you can make it's not a hack you're not changing the design of the coat at all the pattern has actually full instructions and a video link to bag out the coat in order to line it and I know that's super popular you know you'll find that technique in lots of patterns commercial patterns indie patterns you know but I am old school <laughs> I am old school I like to hem everything I make by hand especially a coat so I hem by hand the coat and then I sew the lining on at the bottom by hand leaving a little bit of ease at the bottom so that you can move and the lining's not going to pull the coat up and it's the same way I have hemmed the sleeves in there. You can see the lining in there. Uh, it's a technique that I love that is ingrained and hardwired into the way I sew. And it's been like that for decades, uh, ever since my teens, because I just really enjoy the hand sewing and having that precision. And I just love it, you know? So that's how I do it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how this fits. Here is a full shot of me in my coat. You can see the length. I've left it sort of near me where I like it to be to cover the hems of all the dresses that I wear. It has sort of, it's not flared out or straight either. It just is a bit wider because it has to be. At the back, it looks like that. Length of the sleeves. That if I button it up, it's a bit slimmer fitting, you know. how it looks up closer you can see sort of half of me <laughs> and the button closure here up closer the big show collar there that lies really nicely nice and flat you know it fits really well you can see the feet of the shoulders there I tend to get a really good shoulder and sleeve fit with these patterns there I love the way that the coat fits on me and how light it is and I'm so happy I'm gonna have a garment that looks like a coat but is actually not giving me all that warmth that I don't need I would love to make a coat in a real proper wool because I just think they're beautiful but I just it's just too hot and I want to sew practical things that I'm going to wear and I have a coat now but it's just gonna provide the exact warmth that I need for my winter next year. If you were looking for a coat pattern that wasn't too hard to construct that you could make in a wide variety of fabrics you know wovens and knits you might want to try this one out and if you like it you can purchase this pattern through my affiliate link that is in the description box at no cost to you I make a small commission from that sale. So let me know if you've made a coat if you want to make a red coat I know red coats uh, very visible like you walk into a place and people are going to see you. I'm not against that <laughs> I am not against that and I love red red is my color and I am excited to have this red coat in my wardrobe now Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon with another sewing video. Bye and happy sewing Don't you think this is starting to win?